天国を追い出された天使は悪魔になるしかないのだ。そうだろう、スパイ。Before October comes to an end, I thought it would be very fitting to bring you all another deep dive into some of Hollywood's craziest on set film accidents. From on set disasters that left cast and crew requiring brain surgery to an unexpected rescue turned tragedy, today's video will not disappoint followers of the film accident series. Speaking of which, I have some amazing news regarding the film accident series before we get into today's video. There will be a few film accident videos coming out in November and December, and this is not for no reason. I am very happy and proud to announce that G Fuel has partnered up with the film accident series to bring you all these amazing deep dives into some of Hollywood's most covered up stories. G Fuel is working with Child's Play, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Friday the 13th to bring you a few more additions to the film accident series, with each one featuring a story from each of those movies. But we'll get into that later in the video. Without further ado, let's get into the first story that happened on sets of the original Friday the 13th. The original Friday the 13th from 1980 is considered to be an absolute classic in the horror space because of its influence on the slasher genre, with many of the classic elements and tropes that people associate with horror starting in the original Friday the 13th. The film never shied away from any of the graphic and gruesome visuals that were all brought to life. Thanks to the amazing cast and crew that worked on the movie, with some of the practical effects being brought a little too close to real life. There is a part of the movie where one of the characters named Alice goes looking for her friend Bill. She unexpectedly finds Bill pinned to the door with an arrow going through his body and his eye. Call me a fanboy all you want, but I think this visual effect still holds up, and it's most likely because what you're seeing on screen. Really is the actor that played Bill being hoisted up against the door with an arrow attached to his eye. Now, obviously, he's not dead, and obviously, it's not a real arrow going through his eye. But with all the prosthetics and stuff, it, it looks real. But that real look came with a price. The makeup artist that brought this effect to life was named Tom Savini. And it was Savini who came up with the formula for the fake blood that he used on Harry Crosby, who is the actor that played Bill. And things were fine. You know, everything seemed to be going according to plan. The prosthetics and everything went on great. It looked awesome. But what the crew did not know was that the formula that Savini used on Harry Crosby contained an ingredient known as photo flow. And for those of you like me who are just absolutely clueless to what photo flow really is, photo flow is a wetting agent that is primarily used on real pieces of film. To minimize watermarks or streaks when developing said film. It really was just a consumer product that people would use on film at home or people on set would use to clean up film that they used for movies or whatnot. And it was definitely not meant to be used as fake blood. But no one understood the effects that this ingredient could have on someone. Until the scene was finished. So, leading up to this scene, the blood was applied to Harry Crosby's face. They planted the arrow into his eye with a little bit of blood in there, and everything was going according to plan. They shot the scene, it came out great, and what you see shot is what ended up in the film. But when they finished filming and they took all the prosthetics off, Harry Crosby was in excruciating pain. This obviously caused a panic, and Crosby kept exclaiming that he was in so much pain and that he couldn't see anything. Because Savini used photo flow as an ingredient, it caused Crosby to be blinded for nearly six months from the time the scene was filmed until after. This was definitely a better outcome than most of the other on set accidents we've gone over in the series.、Uh, this one did remind me, though, of the Clockwork Orange incident that we went over in part one to the film accident series. And 100% of the blame definitely goes to Tom Savini, the person who used photo flow in this blood formula. But, I mean, for all we know, Savini just, you know, didn't get enough sleep、uh, and went to work all groggy. Like, if only there was something he could have ate or drank that would have woken him up and gotten him focused and ready for the day. This is a segue. G Fuel! Okay, seriously though, I love this drink. And to prove it, I drank every single flavor they gave me. And there was a lot. Oh, yeah. 
I'd find it hard to believe that anyone watching would not be able to find a favorite amongst the plethora of amazing flavors that G Fuel has to offer. My personal favorite at the moment is the Nightmare on Elm Street Fruit Punch flavor, or as they call it, Dream Demon. Ooh. I've been throwing these drinks back every single time I wake up and it's been an absolute pleasure. They are all zero calories, zero sugar, and just all around help me get a start to my day. If you're anything like me and you'll think you'll have trouble finding a flavor that you like, have no fear as I've created an entire Google document that I wrote in as I tried all of the flavors that I liked and I detailed exactly what I liked about them. And keep in mind, the lowest rating I gave any of these was like an 8 out of 10 and it's only because I'm not a fan of the fruit that was used in that can. And despite that, it still tasted great. I honestly have yet to taste a bad flavor from G Fuel. And to prove it, I'm going to be leaving an unlisted video going over all of my reactions to each flavor. And this was not my intention. I did not intend on uploading this after the fact. I only recorded myself opening all those cans every single day for the last like month for that literal two second b-roll shot that you saw earlier. I'm only going to be uploading that unlisted video because I just thought that some of my reactions to G Fuel was priceless. Ooh, I like that one. So if you want to support the Film Accident series and you are looking for a great drink to replace whatever vice you have, look no further as G Fuel is offering a 20% off if you use code THEORIST at checkout. So check the link in the description and again, make sure to use code THEORIST. You will not regret it. Now let's get back by talking about the next film accident on today's video. In the third installment to the Transformers series, there was a freak accident that changed the life of an extra on set when a stunt went horribly, horribly wrong. 24-year-old Gabriela Cedillo was one of 80 extras on set of Transformers The Dark of the Moon, with all of the extras being used for a specific action sequence of the film. Now this stunt was a little weird, and that's me speaking from my experience researching all of these accidents. So while they were filming in Hammond, Indiana, they had a scene with a bunch of cars. The crew needed a ton of vehicles, and the solution they came up with was to offer all of the extras an extra $25 per day of shooting if they used their own personal vehicles for the shot. And one of the extras that agreed to this 25 extra dollars a day while using their own personal vehicle was Gabriela Cedillo. And everything seemed normal until they informed Gabriela that they were going to be using her personal car in a stunt for the film. Her own personal Toyota vehicle was going to be used for an extra $25. Like, that's already crazy. Um, and sources that were on set have expressed that nobody was really informed of the risks involved with this stunt. They tried to make it seem very casual that they were just going to use her car for this stunt. From what I've been able to read, it appears that the stunt involved a stunt car of some sort being pulled or pulling Gabriella's vehicle. And this was done with the use of a towing cable and a certified welder like welding something to one of the cars so that it would pull it more efficiently. It's not really clear exactly what the stunt was. All that we know was that this was the damage done to what I believe was Gabriella's Toyota Scion. The towing cable snapped causing all of this damage to the car and reportedly took one third of Gabriella's head with it. And she lived. She fought through and managed to live after this entire experience and this is a little unlike the other accidents that we've gone over. And that's because, at least on paper, this was a true accident. Most of the other accidents that we've talked about, there was some kind of malpractice involved. Either the stunt was way too dangerous and stunt crew came out and expressed that they shouldn't do it and they were just ignored, leading to an accident, or somebody just didn't do their safety precaution checks but that was not the case with the transformers incident and i'm only including this to tell the full story of what happened even after hearing the full story i still 100 percent side with gabriella and you will definitely understand why in a minute so again the crew did in fact do what was required of them 
They hired a certified welder on set that performed all of the necessary safety precautions leading up to this stunt going wrong. And here is where the really, really sad part of the story comes in. So because legally they did everything in their power to prevent this accident from happening, they were not liable for this. And they chose to not pay a single dime for Gabriella and her medical bills. They they let they basically left her to fend for herself when it came to this problem. All of her medical bills came out of her own pocket, her own health care, and some public aid that she managed to get. And that was the story for a while. She got screwed over and was left to deal with everything on her own. And these injuries were serious. She required brain surgery. The entire left side of her body ended up being paralyzed because of it. And she was just left hopeless with a mountain of bills to pay. If it wasn't for another controversy attacking the same film in the same year, Gabriella would not have had any kind of happy resolution. The other controversy came in the form of a guerrilla style video that was shot and posted online of a crash that happened on set of the Transformers Dark of the Moon. The video shows a Transformers 3 stunt car crashing into a real police vehicle as it rushed to a real emergency. This one video gained enough notoriety and surged enough presence that it was a bother to the industry and it did so in such a way that Gabriella was able to pile on and sue the studio for damages on the grounds of negligence, claiming that Gabriella was hired as an extra and not part of the film's stunt crew, so she should not have even been involved in the stunt in the first place. And this is why you should be siding with Gabriella. She was required to do a stunt on set that she had no business being a part of. She was not hired on to do that. And even so, she was only paid an extra $25 to do this stunt. So they underpaid her, and at the very least, when it, when things went wrong, you would expect them to come up and pay for her medical bills, but they didn't do that. They sat back and decided that just because they did all of their safety checks that it wasn't their concern anymore. And it just goes to show how cutthroat these companies are and how they view people. And I don't know if it's because this story is just so old, or if the company doesn't want people to see any evidence of it. But finding the footage of this crash, because it does exist, was extremely hard. There seems to be no footage of the damage done to Gabriella's car, but you can see in this video the white stunt car skidding across the ground. If you're watching the screen and wondering you know, where you're supposed to look, you can see the car right here after the fact sliding across the street. And again, this is what the damage looked like after the fact. It's just absolutely insane that this happened, and it was even more insane that they tried to get out of paying her medical bills. So let me know your thoughts on this one uh, below, and if I'm being too harsh or whatnot. I just feel like I've gone over so many of these stories where these executives and companies are just, just trying to get out of doing the decent thing. With all that said, let's just move on to the next film accident. This is a rather interesting case because it's one where both sides of the story claim that the other is lying. The claim for this one is that while making The Hobbit, which came out in 2012, over 27 animals were harmed and killed as part of the process. And it isn't just that simple. The claims were very descriptive, stating that a horse gashed its legs open on an unsafe fence, some of the goats froze to death, and several chickens were left without protection, leading them to getting mauled by dogs, with other animals contracting worms, dying from bad feed, and just all around a ton of negligence. All of these claims came from two Wranglers that were confirmed to be employees and working on the set of The Hobbit. The Wranglers escalated the situation to the AHA, the American Humane Association, who leveled claims against The Hobbit production. And the production was very quick to respond. A rep that spoke for the director, Peter Jackson, explained that there were in fact two incidents involving two deaths of horses that were avoidable but they completely denied the accusation of the other 27 animals that died due to mistreatment. Further explaining that they poured 
hundreds of thousands of dollars to improve the conditions of the animals in early 2011 when production was high. And if you watch the movie, you will see one of those disclaimers that says no animals were harmed in the filming of this movie. And all of this starts to make a lot more sense when you find out that the two wranglers who claimed this were part of the Hobbit production, but after a year in, no longer worked there. So in my mind, when I got to this part of the story, I immediately thought like, okay, so two random workers were let go from the Hobbit production and they were mad, they were angry. So in order to get back at Warner Brothers, they leveled all of these crazy accusations against them. And as said before, it was done as a way to get back at Warner Brothers for firing them. And then the clap back from Peter Jackson almost convinced me. It almost made me think, okay, so this is the full story. But then I did some more digging and I found out that the two Wranglers were not fired. They chose to leave, they quit. And that changes up the entire story. So they explained that they saw the conditions of the animals and didn't want any part of it, choosing to step away from the production. And the disclaimer that you see in the movie is very literal. No animals were harmed during the filming of this movie. And in Hollywood, that means if the cameras were not rolling when the accident took place, then no one was harmed during the filming. Literally, right? The cameras aren't rolling. There's nothing filming. So if all these accidents took place without the camera on, then none of then they could make that claim. They could literally convince the masses by putting that in the movie. This disclaimer, no animals were harmed during the filming of this movie instead of the making of this movie, which is a humongous difference, right? That little asterisk is very important. And this does seem to be what happened because when the American Humane Association did their investigation later on that year, they ended up giving them a passing grade, but they also noted that they were giving them a passing grade based on the onset conditions and that the animals housing facilities were in fact subpar. And most of these claims at least from what I've read, were kind of about the housing facilities. You know, the horse cut its leg open on an old fence. Some of them were, were given bad feed, bad food, and they got like bad diseases and whatnot, and that killed the animals. So a lot of these claims were made against the living conditions as opposed to things that the animals were made to do while the film was being made. This is Ray from the future. So I just noticed while editing this that I did not talk about what exactly happened to the animals after the fact because you will see in a lot of the articles that it states animals did not die on set and that is true the animals did pass away later when they were returned back to some of the owners so the point i was trying to make here was essentially they can't prove that the onset conditions contributed to the animals dying later on but it is most likely the reason as to why those animals passed away Okay, let's let past Ray get back to talking about this. And based on all of that, I can only believe that the two Wranglers were telling the truth, but the burden of evidence is what led to them just being kind of swept under the rug. They can't prove that these things happened due to poor living conditions of the facilities, so there's no real way to fight this in court. You know, it's mostly just hearsay. And I still want to make it clear, this is just my speculation. Uh, there is no confirmed source that has come out explaining all of this. I'm just trying to read between the lines and come up with what I think is the real story. And, and I think that that's the truth. Uh, the, the sources are out there in the, for you to find. And I think the ones that I read led me to exactly what I showed everyone here. This is a unique story in that it's the earliest known film accident that has ever been recorded. And it's a pretty obscure one at that. So Across the Border from 1914 is an American short film about a man named Curly Smith who ends up uncovering a band of smugglers, leading him to getting injured, falling in love with one of the smugglers' daughters, and yada yada yada. I know you all didn't come here for a summary of that movie. But just to set the scene for this section, this is one of those old western type movies that also happens to be a silent short film. The screenshots that I'm showing are what I believe to be the only screenshots available of the film, mostly because it's an obscure one and it's over a hundred years old. 
The female lead for this movie was played by Grace McHugh, who was the person that was involved in this accident. And one of the scenes that she was required to shoot was a scene with a boat. And I, I gotta admit, when I was researching this one, I was struggling to understand the conditions of the set. Right? One of the questions that I kept asking myself when reading this entire story was, why were they so unprepared? Like, why was Grace McHugh almost left on this boat by herself? There was no like team ready to spring into action if something happened. This was a question that I kept asking myself while I was researching this story. The scene that I think was supposed to happen because I haven't been able to watch the film anywhere, I believe there was a river and Grace McHugh was put in a boat on the river and all she had to do was simply cross the river on this boat. And the, the, the film crew appeared to be filming a good distance away from her while this scene was happening. Um, but in my opinion, I feel like this whole sequence, this entire situation was just asking for disaster to happen because based on what ended up occurring, they just were not ready for any type of water accident to happen. And before I explain what happened to Grace McHugh, because I will get there and it's not at all what any of you are expecting, but before I explain all that, I feel at this point, I should make it abundantly clear that this is 1914. It's very important to keep in mind the time period that this situation happened in because safe practices and onset regulations really were just not a thing at this point in time. You have to remember, this was pre-code Hollywood. This was 20 years before the motion picture production code would even be put into place. And it would be nearly six years before any type of real crazy public disaster involving an actor would shake up the industry. And the case I'm talking about with that is the Harold Lloyd incident, where he accidentally lit a bomb that exploded, taking his hand with it. Cases like that and this series in general have led to me questioning, when did Hollywood start executing safe practices on set? And it was this line of logic that led to a quite shocking and I guess in hindsight, pretty obvious discovery. You see, I always thought that if I cared enough to look into it, I would be able to find a set point in time where Hollywood decided to get their shit together and create a safety code that could be used on every film set. But I could not find that while researching for this. I could not find a defining moment where that happened. And this is because everything that you have all been watching, every single accident, every single malpractice from cast and crew, and every single onset disaster that resulted in death is the safety code. Each time one of these film disasters happens and it's brought to court, these companies, these big production companies are forced into a corner, right? Like, of course, they can just choose to keep doing business as usual and they can just keep filming stuff and ignore it. And I'm sure that's what they want, right? That's the optimal play for the production company. But because these accidents have happened and because courts can now look back and point to an abundance of any of the infamous onset disasters, if any similar accident occurs on any sets going forward, that production company will now be held liable. And they'll be held liable on the grounds of not practicing safety precautions, leading to unwanted lawsuits, which will result in them for sure losing. So it's in their best interest every time these accidents happen to prevent them because they don't wanna get sued, right? We've seen this in the Transformers case. They didn't want to pay Gabriella's medical bills and they took the opportunity that arose to say, look, you know, we're not liable. We did all the precautions, right? Why are we gonna pay your medical bills when we don't have to? They will only ever do the right thing when they are forced to do the right thing. And because Across the Border took place in 1914, there had yet to be any type of real onset safety for all types of situations. This was a time before they had all of this information to go off of to provide the best care for their cast and crew. And I'm sure that on the set of Across the Border, they did have staff that was ready to tend to cuts, bruises, or injuries. And I'm sure they probably had even like a team ready to go in case of an emergency. But this was a time where they didn't know what could potentially happen. And it's this lack of information to go off of that led to this tragic incident. And this brings us full circle back to where we were earlier. Grace McHugh on the boat. So what ended up happening was as they were filming the boat crossing the river, the boat 
inexplicably capsized. It began sinking, which led to Grace McHugh nearly drowning in the water below. It was at that point that a cameraman named Owen Carter tried his best to rescue her, immediately jumping into the river without any hesitation. And this guy at first was doing an amazing job. He managed to swim them both back to shore and the two were laid down relaxing on what appeared to be a sandbar, which if you don't know, is one of these little patches or mounds of sand, almost like a mini island, if you will. And that's where Owen managed to bring Grace and himself to after the boat capsized. Only there was one issue that nobody could have foresaw. Where Owen and Grace were relaxing, where they were trying to catch their breath on, was not a sandbar. What Owen and everyone else on set thought was a sandbar turned out to be quicksand, which slowly but surely caused Owen Carter and Grace McHugh to sink away from everyone's view, getting sucked down by the quicksand with their bodies not turning up for nearly a week. Owen was found five days later and Grace was found 12 days later, nine miles away from the set. And just like some of the other accidents, they used her death to advertise the movie, stating this film is one of the greatest Mexican war features in which Miss Grace McHugh, the beautiful and daring leading lady, lost her life. Just disgusting on their part to even do that. And worse is that Owen Carter was not really recognized for his efforts. And the only time that I saw him being recognized was from this little snippet that you're seeing on screen, which I think is the only time that any kind of outlet recognized what Owen Carter did that day. I was also not able to find any evidence that there was any type of compensation to the families, but for all I know, it could have happened and it's just not easily findable or written down somewhere. Regardless, this was a tragedy. And the only silver lining here with this film, along with many of the others that we've gone over, is that in a way they were trailblazers for these types of precautions to be taken on every film set as of now. And it just pains me to know that these things most likely could not have been prevented because no one really expects these situations to happen unless they are like painfully obvious like the Twilight Zone incident. So while it's really hard to hear about these events taking place leading up to now, it's part of history. And I guess all we can really do with this information is take it into account. And then when the same situation inevitably comes up again, we will be better prepared and equipped to manage the problem before it ends up on one of my videos. And with that, we're at the end of yet another disturbing film accident edition. Again, massive shout outs to G Fuel. I cannot stress enough. Uh, I've drank nearly 20 cans of like, drink one like every single day and I love it. Uh, I, I honestly think that their flavors are great. I think the only two I haven't tried right now are, The Raging Gummy Fish flavor. I haven't tried this one yet. I'll probably have that one on the document uh, by the time this video comes out. Same with uh, the Starfruit flavor. I haven't tried that one yet. But I've tried every single other flavor as of right now, and they're good. They're honestly really good. Uh, all that and and all that flavor for zero calories is what blows my mind the most too. Because I've drinking just a lot of energy drinks. I'm drinking so many energy drinks. I know it's not the best for you, but I think this is a great alternative to you know, drinking a lot of other companies out there. Um, yeah, all that flavor for zero calories and great deal by just clicking the link below and using Code Theorist. If you guys want to support the channel, support this series and keep it coming and go check that out. And this leads me to the real supporters of this channel, the Patreon members. Thank you so much. I, I know I haven't posted in like two months, but I have this video and i have like an almost two hour long iceberg coming out soon i'm so excited for that one to come out uh, along with the rest of the film accident series it's been a wild two months just making all of this stuff in the background and yeah uh, i've been working like almost every day since my last post uh and everyone's gonna finally see all of my hard work um in the coming weeks which is just awesome and i, I, and I could not have done it without the Patreon supporters who, despite me not uploading, uh, stayed with me, stayed loyal to the, the, the community, the channel, and just thank you. Like, I cannot express enough how much it means to me, and 
yeah i'm putting out updates on there um every so often too to keep everyone updated uh they got a little sneak peek of the disturbing um music iceberg that's coming out there's like a 13 minute video i go over all the research i've been doing and whatnot if that interests you go ahead and go check that out too it will be on my patreon it's like one of the last posts that i've made um but yeah uh just thank you guys i love you all you're, you're all amazing and with all of that said i will see you all in the next video thanks for watching